Hello and welcome to my review of Assassin's Creed Unity. Assassin's Creed Unity has a very storied and turbulent history from the very first day it reached consumers' hands on November 11, 2014. With a disastrous launch followed by a public execution that rang throughout the internet, Ubisoft for many years had to bear a mark of shame for its failure, one that would greatly influence the future direction of the series. With eye-popping bugs, face-melting glitches, and performance issues ranging from moderate to severe, it was a mess. But after all these years, can a game that was once burned at the stakes rise from the ashes to become one of the franchise's crowning achievements? Or does it still lie in embers? With the passage of time, memories fade and hatred subside. Aided by new and more powerful hardware, Assassin's Creed Unity can be re-evaluated under a different light in a different time. Released the same day alongside Assassin's Creed Rogue, Assassin's Creed Unity continues in the action-adventure stealth genre and is the 8th major installment in the series. Rogue, the 7th installment, debuted on the older generations PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, while Unity was released exclusively on the more powerful PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Both titles were also available on PC. Rogue was developed in the Anvil Next game engine that was also used for Assassin's Creed 3 and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, whereas Unity would be the first in line of the next generation of Assassin's Creed games to be released utilizing Ubisoft's updated Anvil Next 2.0. The updated game engine opened up new possibilities and allowed the developers to do more. But does more always mean better? In this video, I'll take a look into the death and rebirth of Assassin's Creed Unity. How is the game in its current state, and how does it compare to the newer and older titles? And ultimately, is it worth revisiting or visiting for the first time? Alright, let's get started. You'll start off by playing as young Arno Dorian at the Palace of Versailles. Eight years old and out of sight from his father, and from you as well, this little horned dog is coaxed by the young temptress Elise into stealing an apple. You'll learn basic movements and stealth, and before too long, you'll be given control as adult Arno to finish the rest of the tutorial. Thirteen years later as an adult, you're free to roam the streets of France before the kingdom is thrown into turmoil and disarray as she struggles to find a new identity. Navigate through the sea of people below or on rooftops above if you're feeling a little claustrophobic. The buildings are beautifully designed, ornately decorated, and the people and their actions breathe life into the city of lights that emanate from the flames of revolution. With improved draw distances over previous titles, there's no shortage of spectacle and it was enthralling. Painstakingly crafted, Unity's Paris is a portal to another era. The possibility of having thousands of NPCs that have no concept of personal space on screen simultaneously adds a layer of immersion as they not only react to your actions, but also each other's. Alongside many Parisian landmarks, the one-to-one -one scale of Notre Dame is breathtaking and remains Unity's show-stopping centerpiece. The faithful recreation was even used to aid the restoration efforts of the medieval cathedral after it caught fire in April of 2019. The process of modeling Notre Dame Cathedral took two years to complete and is on full display throughout the game. This game showcases the capabilities of the game engine and the ambition of the developers that even today holds up incredibly well. The combat is excellent. They have done away with counter kills and the earlier memory sequences can be challenging, as you have not yet learned your entire moveset. The fencing-inspired sword fighting is elegant, precise, technical, and Arno is not one to shy away from flair. Countering at precise moments will result in the perfect parry that will allow you to continue to fight with surgical precision. If ever in a pinch, you can utilize one of Arno's many sidearms in his arsenal, or consumables at his disposal. There are several types of enemies providing enough variety to keep combat from going stale, and a wide array of weapons to choose from, each with a distinct fighting style to give it an additional layer of depth. After killing enemies, looting their bodies will help replenish supplies. 
Paris is full of chests, cockades, newspapers, and synchronization points that serve to feed your addictive needs. Some chests and hidden rooms require lockpicking, with varying degrees of difficulty to crack. Those that fancy themselves collectors will no doubt find these compulsory, like a shot of collector's dopamine. Like in many games before it, you can access the menu to check your collection progress, and check the map for collectible locations. The tutorial extends into the first handful of memory sequences or missions, and progression follows the same tried and true formula. Main missions will be a mix of reconnaissance, infiltration, chase sequences, and defending or escorting a target that ultimately leads to the assassination of a major target. As you complete memories, you unlock new abilities, have access to new items, and earn sync points, which are your skill points. Use these sync points to upgrade abilities in the customization menu to become a master assassin. Each mission will have a diamond rating denoting its difficulty. As you invest more into your abilities and purchase new gear, your diamond rating will also increase, signaling your ability as an assassin. Assassinating Templars is a costly affair. Like the home base that was introduced in Assassin's Creed 2, Le Café Théâtre will be Arno's base of operations. It'll contain a weapons room, an armory, a training room, and most importantly, generate what the French adore most, bread and cheese. Renovating your home base will increase the rate of francs flowing into your coffers, and purchasing satellite social clubs around the city will not only further increase your income, but also unlock several side missions. If you want to earn some extra fromage on the side, or if you're interested in a particular side story, side missions found throughout the city give you the chance to help the subjects of the French kingdom. Activate a glitch to help assassins in need, often in a different time period. Join multiplayer co-op missions if you wish to partake in narrative-driven side quests with friends. Engage in Paris stories, social club missions, and many more. As your coin purse steadily fills with French stereotypes, use it to purchase new gear. You can access the customization options at any time in the menu without having to be at a vendor. More expensive weapons and armor pieces will have improved stats. Upgrade them to improve them even further. You can dye your armor with the wide selection of colors in-game. Mix and match armor pieces to get the look you desire. However, there is no way to change the design of the armor independently from its stats, so at some point you will have to choose what you value more, style or substance. There are also a myriad of customization options laced with microtransactions, as many of the customization options can be purchased with Helix credits, which cost real money. However, I'm relieved to report that never at any point did I feel like progression was held back in order to push microtransactions upon you, a tactic that Ubisoft will continue to explore. Once you've found a fashionable outfit, you can now travel across Paris in style. Although perhaps not revolutionary, the evolution of the free run system was something I liked, and wished Ubisoft continued to pursue and refine. The free run system that has been used for quite some time now has been expanded with the free run down mechanic that drastically cuts the time it takes to descend buildings. At its best, the fluidity of Arno's skill is graceful, and his style unmatched. There's a hypnotic quality as Arno vaults and slides around Paris. The map isn't big, but Paris is a great playground. In such a dense city with tightly packed rooftops, you'll never tire of jumping from window to window over crowded streets and over unsuspecting people, as you catch a glimpse of some beautifully decorated rooms while trying to catch your assailant. There's depth to the free running in Unity that is rarely found in the other titles. And with mastery, it achieves something special, immersion. It's subtle and you may not even realize it, but it feels good to run around in Paris. The controls give you a high level of freedom, but it does still suffer from the same finicky movements like its predecessors. But when it works, I believe it to be some of the highest points in the series. I play it on PC with an Xbox controller. The stealth in the game works very well, partly due to the large crowd gatherings in the streets. Unity introduces a cover system and a crouch function that's been inexplicably missing until now. Being able to enter one of the many buildings means you can break your pursuer's line of sight rather quickly, Outmaneuver them and you'll likely be able to lose them in the crowded streets by becoming a pale blue ghost. Unity has done away with the notoriety or bounty system, and there are fewer haystacks to promote the use of the new free run down, social stealth, and environmental blending mechanics. I found this to be a nice change because haystacks seem largely out of context. Like you should expect in any good Assassin's Creed game, assassinations are the core pillars of the game, and that is no different in Unity. Take your enemies down silently from above, 
from behind cover, or chain multiple kills using the right tools. Unity's assassination missions are well designed. Fulfilling certain objectives is usually in your best interest, as they open up new pathways and allow for unique kill opportunities. Now let's touch on the music. The soundtrack of Assassin's Creed Unity was co-created by three composers, Chris Tilton, Ryan Amon, and Sarah Shackner, the last of whom would go on to compose the soundtrack of Assassin's Creed Origins and parts of Valhalla. But like France at the time, I never felt the soundtrack had a strong unifying theme. And who came up with the track titles for the soundtrack? Half of them are puns, and some of them are quite good. But not to stray too far off topic, the music was decent and some tracks were very good, but nothing as impressive as Paris itself. I enjoyed the music but found the score from other Assassin's Creed's more memorable. The quips from Arno as he interacts with other characters are well written and clever. Ever the charmer, Arno is nimble-witted and the center of attention, that is until Belloc and Elise arrive. Arno was charismatic, but Belloc and Elise's performance stole the limelight and maintained a steadfast grip on my otherwise short attention span. I was captivated by the actor's performances and the motion capture was superb and ahead of its time. I enjoyed the story of Unity and was glad the modern day out of Animus experience was kept to a minimum. The story follows Arno Dorian. You are served but a glimpse into his childhood before fast forwarding back to the present. As you complete main missions, you'll learn more about Arno, his desires, and his motivations. From his almost comical framing, The Eve of the Revolution, to the few historical figures Arno encounters, he'll be caught between two sides like Shakespeare's Romeo, one of love and one of duty. I think Arno is a decently developed protagonist, and as you travel between Paris and Versailles, you'll find out more about the Assassin Brotherhood and the Templar Order. Each main mission pushes the narrative forward, and the story progresses at a good pace. The main missions don't do a stellar job at depicting the disconnect between the common people and the grandeur of high society, but otherwise do a good job developing Arno as a character. However, this all came at a cost. While the game is a graphical marvel, that ambition would ultimately be its downfall. With a release riddled with bugs and mired in controversy, it absolutely hammered the hardware at the time, and even to this day, can still remain a challenge for machines to run at higher settings. Minor bugs are still prevalent, and some scenes and sequences still have stutters and hitches on the PC version, meaning at this point they're likely never to be fully fixed. Texture pop-ins are still a regular occurrence and noticeable, a limitation put in place because of the technology at the time. The game is playable and still very much enjoyable, but issues still do exist. One can't help but wonder and imagine an alternate reality where Assassin's Creed Unity was released as a stable and relatively bug-free game. The course and direction of the series may be on a different path entirely. The failure of Unity caused a change in design philosophy for the franchise. If you're a longtime fan of Assassin's Creed, then there's no doubt that you've heard of Assassin's Creed Unity, but if you haven't, the launch of Unity could only be described as catastrophic. Infamous for its poor launch that likely resembled the contents of a chamber pot widely used during this time, Unity was a manifestation of Ubisoft's failures. So what made this game so hated? Alongside the long list of performance issues, the game was incomplete when released and smaller in scale when compared to the uncharted seas of Black Flag. Ubisoft had maybe spread itself too thin by releasing two Assassin's Creed games on the same day, and if given the opportunity, they would probably want to do some things differently. However, for their failures, they were stuck in a PR nightmare, and rightfully so. And because of their failures, the direct sequel Syndicate would suffer, and remain one of the worst selling games of the franchise. But with time, I think many people have re-evaluated Unity and have warmed up to it. What was once bogged in technical issues, bugs, and graphical mishaps has more or less been solved by patches and post-launch updates. Even though some of the game's issues will likely never truly be fixed, it's somewhat solved by the raw power of modern hardware's rendering capabilities. It's hard to look back and say this was a bad game as I didn't play the game on release. For that, I would need a method of time travel. But harder still was calling it a good game at launch. But I think with the new releases, many people are re-evaluating what they want in an Assassin's Creed game. Bigger doesn't always mean better. More doesn't necessarily mean depth. That's in no way saying the newer games are bad, but they are different. Paris is small compared to the likes of Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla, but the density of the city never made me feel like it lacked content. 
It was packed to the brim with everything I needed. However, Unity is somewhat of an anomaly. It was underdeveloped when it was released, but it was also ahead of its time. With how quickly technology improves, its technical faults are largely a thing of the past. Had the game been given an extra year of development, the history of Unity and possibly the series would likely have been quite different. But what once served as a testament to their failures has now been given new life. Re-examined under a new lens, it has possibly become the piece de resistance of Ubisoft's vast portfolio of Assassin's Creed games. While that can be debated, I think this is a game that every fan of the genre should experience. But if you were misled by the marketing hype at launch when Ubisoft oversold and underdelivered, and it's out of principle that this game remains condemned, then I don't blame you. But for those who are still open to Unity, it's a game I recommend. Unity is a highly romanticized portrayal of the French Revolution that plays fast and loose with history. If it weren't for the sheer attention to details that was put into this game, it wouldn't have garnered a second look. As a game that neither looks nor feels outdated, it's holding up remarkably well. While I would not classify the game as avant-garde even at launch, the combat, progression, assassinations, and stealth will all be familiar to those who've played the older titles. They'll feel like a natural progression of those mechanics, and won't feel outdated, even when put side by side with the newer titles. Traversal and free running has received a nice update that makes the game feel faster. Paris is dense, with enough side activities and collectibles for those who find enjoyment in those things. The music is good and the game is rounded off by superb performances and a solid Assassin's Creed story. If you haven't played this game and have a machine capable of playing it, Assassin's Creed Unity is one I greatly enjoyed and would recommend. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this game, and what I should cover next. Until next time, see ya.